Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, and in this video, I'll be talking about the pros and cons of using YouTube live streaming instead of Zoom for teaching online. <coughs> Now, if you've been following my other videos, you know I am up to my elbows in Zoom tutorials at this point, and I originally made those videos for teachers and college professors who were forced to teach online due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And in that case, the teacher is usually going to work at a school that has an institutional license for Zoom, so they don't need their own personal account. However, many of the questions and comments I've gotten on those videos have been from small business owners or people teaching individually, ranging from acting or painting classes to yoga and fitness instruction. And in that case, they need to have their own individual account since they're not getting Zoom for free through work. So that inspired me to start a series on other options besides Zoom for teaching online. As you may have noticed, I am in the YouTube streaming environment. This is not Zoom. So in this video, I will walk you through setting up a basic YouTube stream and then talk about some of the pros and cons of using YouTube instead of Zoom. And as a side note, I apologize for the poor lighting in this video, but it gets dark at five o'clock now. And this is also the first video I've made since we had a new baby two weeks ago. So if I look really tired or sound incoherent, that's why. So let's back up and show you how to set up a basic YouTube stream if you have not done this before. So you will need a YouTube account, which gives you your own YouTube channel. I'm not going to show you how to create that account in this video, but assuming you've done that, you go up to this little plus button on the video camera icon in the top right and select go live instead of upload video, which is what you would usually use to upload a pre-made video. If you don't have this option, your account might not be eligible for it. I believe you need to have a verified account, meaning you have verified your email address. This is to help verify that you are a real person and not a bot. So when you are ready to go live or schedule a live stream, you click that button. That is going to bring you to a new screen that looks like this. And over on the left here, you have three different options, stream, webcam, and manage. Now, it defaults to webcam, which is pretty easy to set up and what I'll be discussing in this video. If you want to stream content from your computer screen, you need to click the stream option on the left, and this is much more complicated. It actually requires third-party software to stream the content from your computer screen. So this is the first major difference with Zoom. There isn't a simple share my screen button that you can use to just toggle between your webcam view and a view of what's on your screen, for example, like a PowerPoint presentation. Again, that's gonna be a topic for a future video. For now, I'm just going to focus on the webcam option, which might make more sense for someone like a drama teacher or doing fitness classes or music classes, etc. Now, once you are here and you've clicked on that webcam icon on the left, you will see a window with options to set up your stream. So you can give the stream a title, for example, if I was going to call it fitness class, and the first major decision you need to make is whether this is a public stream that anyone can view or if it's unlisted so only people with the link can view. So if you are doing a private class, for example, a one-on-one -on -one music class for a student or a fitness class for a group of people who have paid for it, that's one thing where you will want it to be unlisted so you send them the link and they're the only ones who can access it versus something that's public that anyone can see. You can choose whether you're going to start it right now or whether you're going to schedule it for later, in which case you would click this checkbox and then pick the date and time you want the stream to start. And down here under more options, there are some advanced options like a category, you can add a written description. And importantly, similar to Zoom, you need to make sure you have the right webcam and microphone selected. So if you have a computer with multiple microphones or an external webcam and a built-in webcam, you're going to want to select the one you want to use here. So for example, I have two different microphones plugged in. I'm going to select that one. And there are some more advanced settings. You can decide whether or not you want chat to be on and then let YouTube know whether this is a sponsored video or if you want to earn ad revenue on the video. I'm not really gonna get into details about that here. Once you have all those settings like you want them, you click next and it's going to ask you to make a thumbnail. It kind of, that countdown might catch you off guard at first and it'll give you an awful photo if you weren't paying attention, but you can always retake the thumbnail or upload a custom thumbnail. It'll give you an option to go back and edit any of these settings previously. And then when you're ready, you hit the go live button. It will give you a little loading icon as it starts and then it will start your stream. So I started an unlisted stream. I'm the only one here, nobody else can see this. If I wanted other people to see it, I go down and click the share icon here and you can share to social media or copy this link and email it to people and then they will be able to come in and view the stream. 
Now, this is what I see as the host, and the major difference between this and Zoom is that this is only a one-way video and audio delivery platform. So there is no two-way audio or video chat with the viewers. The only way you can communicate with them is through the text chat over here on the right. So that is the major difference between this and Zoom. That might work fine if you are doing, for example, a fitness class or something where people only need to see you. It probably doesn't work. For example, I've heard from people doing painting classes or acting classes where you need to see your students' paintings or faces. There's no way for them to send you their video. This is just one way. Again, that is the major difference. It might work in some scenarios and not others. To show what your viewers would see, I'm going to switch over to another browser tab where I am not logged in as the host account. This is just what a viewer would see. And you'll see there is a couple second delay here. So the, the audio that you're seeing in this video that I'm recording on my host computer looks like it's out of sync with my lips here, but on the viewer end, that would be fine. So if I was recording the audio from this video, which I have muted here, then it would sound okay. So don't worry about that. Just seeming weird in this tutorial. That's because I'm doing both of these in the same computer. So you can see there's a little lag here where I raise my hand in this video and there's a couple second delay to this one. Again, that wouldn't affect your viewers. They would only be seeing this white video with the audio synced up. So again, if you're used to my Zoom tutorials, you'll probably notice that all of the other things you remember from Zoom are absent here. There's no share screen button. There's no breakout rooms. There's no spotlight pin or any of that. This is just you streaming video to people. But I think there are still some scenarios where this might make more sense than Zoom if you have to pay for your own Zoom license. So what we're going to do next is look at more of a side-by-side -side breakdown of those different features of the YouTube stream versus a free Zoom account and a paid Zoom account. So let's break this down into a side-by-side -side feature comparison between three different options, YouTube streaming, Zoom's basic free account, and Zoom's first level paid pro account. So first and foremost, two-way video communication. If you need that, YouTube is simply not the right platform. Again, it is only one-way video streaming from you to the viewer. There is no video or audio from them back to you. However, if you can get away with just text chat, that is available on both platforms. And again, if you need to do screen sharing, it's not that it is not possible with YouTube. Obviously, tons of people stream gaming videos and other content. It just requires some third-party streaming software and is a little more complicated to set up, so there might be a bit more of a learning curve, as opposed to Zoom, which just has the built-in share screen button and doesn't require any other software. So it might look like this is stacked pretty heavily in favor of Zoom up until this point, but I think the advantages for YouTube start to come in when you look at the price and some of the limitations that are built into the Zoom accounts. So obviously YouTube is free and so is the basic Zoom account, Whereas as of November 2020, a pro Zoom account is $149 a year, so a little over $10 a month, which doesn't seem that bad. However, Zoom does have some limitations, even on the pro account, that you might run into for a couple different reasons. One is the participant limit, so there is no limit to the number of people that can watch a YouTube stream. If you happen to be hosting something that is extremely popular or goes viral, you could have hundreds, thousands, or theoretically even millions of people watching a stream all at once, whereas both the Zoom Basic and Pro accounts are going to cap your meeting at 100 participants. If you want more than that, you will need to go up to the more expensive business and enterprise accounts. Another big factor is the meeting time limit. Now, there is no limit to the length of a live YouTube stream. In theory, you can just leave it on, and I think some people do do this for things like bird cams. However, if you want the archived video to be available, that is limited to 12 hours. Again, for most classes that I've been talking about, like art classes and things, people probably aren't going to be going over that 12-hour limit. This is where the big limitation of the basic free Zoom account comes in. Those meetings are limited to only 40 minutes. So if you need to do a 45 minute or hour long class, then that simply isn't enough. That's kind of an incentive to get people to bump up to the paid pro account where the limit is then 30 hours per meeting. Again, most people holding meetings and teaching classes probably aren't going to be going more than a day long, but this 40 minutes is a pretty short cutoff. So maybe you can get away with that if you're only doing 30 minute individual lessons, but for hour long classes, this simply isn't enough. You would need to move up to a paid account. And then finally, related to that note about archive videos being available, if you would like your videos to be available for people to view after the live event, then you will need cloud storage of some sort. 
people teaching online to people in different time zones use this, for example, so students in Asia don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to watch classes being taught in the US. And this is, again, where there is a huge advantage for YouTube. You get unlimited storage. You can upload as many videos as you want to YouTube, whereas with the free Zoom account, you get none. There is no cloud storage included with that account. You can record your meetings and save them locally, and then if you wanted to, you could go upload them to YouTube after the fact, but there's no built-in cloud storage with the free Zoom account. And even for the Pro account, you do get about one gigabyte of cloud storage, but that's going to run out pretty quickly if you're recording a lot of meetings. So this is where the biggest advantage for YouTube comes in if you want the archive videos to be available later. If you don't care about this and you only want people to be able to see the live stream and then you have no intention of posting the video later, then this doesn't matter. But if you want the archive videos to be available, you're probably going to run into this limit pretty quickly and then you would need to pay for more storage. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. I know it's a little different than what I've done for Zoom previously, but if you have a question, a comment, or especially a suggestion for another tutorial, which is where I get a lot of my ideas for newer videos, please go ahead and leave a comment below this video. Thank you.